And for more, we welcome former UFC light heavyweight champ and UFC Hall of Famer Sugar Rashad Evans. And Rashad, you look at it in the main event, uh, Musasi said he was going to steamroll Salter and stop him in the second. Didn't happen, but he did get it going late in that second round. Uh, and then, of course, gets the TKO uh, from there in the third round. Salter seemed to just run out of gas. What does this mean for Musasi going forward uh, in Bellator in this middleweight division where he right now he is running things? Well, I thought that was a big, good fight for him. You know, he made a statement in that fight. He wanted to go out there and do just that, make a statement in that fight. His last fight he had before that against Lima, he felt like he lost a little bit of steam, but didn't get the, did get the decision, but just wasn't this kind of fight. But this fight, he showed that he still has it. He came out very patient. Salters had his chance in the in the first round, took him down, got him gummed up a little bit. But then in the second round, you see Musas, he really started to turn the corner at the end of the second round, really making Salters pay. And then it was kind of foretelling for what was going to happen into the third round. The third round didn't take much longer for Musasi to get the fight down to the ground and really do what he does really best. Just smother on top with some effective ground upon punches. I mean, I think that this fight right here really just shows that to the rest of the division, hey, you know what? I'm older, I'm 36 years old, but at the end of the day, my style has made me better. And now I'm going to be a better fighter at this way, the, the way that I'm fighting right now. Yes. Like you really didn't respect Salter's uh, ground, you know, uh, you know, standing up top and uh, respected those punches there. And right now he is definitely uh, the, the guy to beat uh, in the uh, middleweight division. We saw Austin uh, Vanderford on the broadcast, did a great job as an analyst. Uh, looks like to be recovering uh, or at least healing with that brace on his left arm. Uh, Vanderford, Rashad, he had a front row seat to the action uh, tonight and he got to measure up against Musasi. Who do you see uh, this next fight between these two? How do you see it going? Who do you think would win this uh, if they do uh, score off? And it looks like, and it seems like they will. Well, it's going to be an interesting one. You know, Vanderford, you know, 11 and 0, really tough guy, really believes in himself. When the guy is that, uh, you know, have unblemished and really don't know what it feels like to taste the feet. You know, their mindset is different and having never a chance to be the champion or climb to the top, their idea of what being a champion is, is different. So you're dealing with a different guy when you get into the cage with somebody like that. So Musasi is definitely going to have his, have his work cut out for him. There's times when Musasi goes in a fight and he's not motivated. And I can say sometimes this may be the thing that can give Vanderford a chance to win the fight. But at the end of the day, he has a very tough and uphill battle against a very seasoned and tough gay guy, Musasi. Well, Vanderford, he seemed pretty confident. A little cocky, too. He basically said, I'm a different animal. Yeah. This, this is different. Hey, Larry, you got to be in this game. Hey, in this game, if you're not cocky, you're not confident just a little bit, they'll smell it. They'll smell the weakness on you. He basically told Musasi, uh, you don't want that smoke, so we'll see. Uh, maybe they can fight here uh, coming up here. He just did what he normally does, and, you know, he was, able, he was able to win the grappling exchanges and just really make Sabah pay on his feet. You know, what he did is Sabah on his feet, bloodied him up and just kind of kept touching him, really not doing too much, but just being consistent, putting that pressure on Sabah and really making him pay, really making him pay in the grappling exchanges. And then when he got, got him back up to his feet, it was just easy work for him to just kind of piece him up a little bit but Sabah did have his moments in his fight he did kind of turn the tides a little bit and it did look as if he was going to kind of come back but then it was just too much for Krishkov I mean his pressure his punching and you know hats off to Sabah those wars that he had paid off big dividends but at the end of the day I mean Krishkov is just on another level right now man he seemed to be in total control uh you know basically just didn't have any issues uh, in that fight uh I want to talk, to talk to you about this, though. I wanted to get your thoughts on the upside of the night. Uh, Raytheon Stotts, I told you, that looked like a confident kid. And, <laughs> you know, the way that he was talking going to this matchup, it seemed like he was going to win this uh, matchup. And he did, uh, beating um, Magab, um, Magomedov, uh, uh, I guess, by unanimous decision. Uh, what did you see from Stotts in this one? And how impressed were you by uh, his performance? And uh, also, uh, you know, the, the chirping that he did going into this one as well. Oh my gosh, Larry, look, you are absolutely right. And listen, I feel bad because I kind of, I should have gone for the American wrestler, but I mean, I just seen the Dagestani's train. I just, I was kind of just overwhelmed by that, just my impression of him. But at the end of the day, what Stotts did was just making sure he fought in the small spaces, not conceding to anything that Magomedov did in any grappling position. And it paid off big dividends because he was able to outscramble uh, Magomedov. And when you get outscrambled and when you get beat in a position, when you feel 
feel like you have it. It just kind of feel like a little bit of the air gets let out the balloon until eventually when you lose enough positions, when you lose enough of those close contested battles, then for, then your, your balloon is popped. And then it's easy at that point for the person to have his way. And that's what we've seen with Stotts. we just seen that he just kept busting Magomedov's balloon over and over again, letting a little bit air out at a time. And then at the end of the day, it was just a great performance by Stotts. Way to just be there with the hands and just a fun, charismatic person. But this is the most exciting part about Bellator is the fact they're bringing up guys like Stotts that are just fun to watch. It was also so good to see the uh, the embrace at the end of the uh, matchup there between Magadev, Magomedov and uh, and Stotts. You know, look, you know, you can see definitely some respect there. And uh, your boy Stotts now, what is he like, 17 and one, 18 and one, looking really good right now uh, in Bellator. Yeah, absolutely, man. These guys that Bellator are bringing through are just, you know, growing at another level. And it's great because now the fans can watch these people grow and really uh, establish a different kind of bond for them. All right, man. He's the UFC Hall of Famer. Rashad, man, thanks for uh, the insight and uh, have a good weekend. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.